Hello everyone, my name is Jatin Diwan and I shall start with human reproduction. There are two essential parts of human reproduction. One is the male reproductive system and the other one is female reproductive system. We shall start with the male reproductive system here. So let's have a look where is it located. A male reproductive system is located in the pelvic region. A male reproductive system includes a pair of testes, accessory ducts, external genitalia, and accessory glands. Okay, so now let's have a look into what is about pair of testes. Pair of testes are located outside the abdominal cavity in a pouch called scrotum. Please make sure that you note the spellings in the correct way. It is located outside the abdominal cavity in a pouch called scrotum because it requires low temperature for spermatogenesis. We shall be explaining about spermatogenesis in the later of this lesson. Each testis has compartments called testicular lobules. These lobules have somniferous tubules lined by male germ cells and Sertoli cells. There are two kinds of cells which are very important in the male reproductive system that is male germ cell and Sertoli cells. And in between there is a seminiferous tubule which is, which is combined of interstitial cells and Leydig cells producing androgen in the testis. Now about accessory ducts. Accessory ducts include red testis, vas efferentia, epididymis and vas deferens. Seminiferous tubules open in, opens into vasa efferentia through red testis which leaves the testis and open into epididymis which further leads to vas deferens. It has ejaculatory duct and urethral meatus. Now about accessory glands. So accessory glands it includes paired seminal vesicle, prostate gland, bulbourethral gland, and then the secretion of these glands constitutes the seminal plasma, which is rich in fructose, calcium, and certain other enzymes. External genitalia is the penis is covered with foreskin. If you can have a look here, this is how a male reproductive system looks like. Now about female reproductive system. The female reproductive system is also located in the pelvic region but of the females. The female reproductive system includes a pair of ovaries, a pair of oviduct, uterus, external genitalia and a pair of mammary gland okay so now about ovaries ovaries is the major sex organ and it produces the female gamete that is known as ovum it also produces several steroid hormones the ovaries are located in the lower abdomen. Each ovary is about 2 to 4 centimeters, connected to the pelvic wall and uterus by ligaments. Each ovary is covered with a thin epithelium which encloses the ovarian stroma. Now the ovarian stroma has two zones, one is the peripheral cortex and the other one is inner medulla. Now let's talk about oviducts. Oviducts, uterus and vagina constitute the female accessory ducts. Each fallopian tube is about 10 to 12 cm long and that extends from the periphery of each ovary to the uterus. Close to the ovary, the oviduct has a funnel shaped structure called infundibulum. The edges of infundibulum possess finger-like projections, those are known as fimbri. 
which helps in collection of the ovum after ovulation. The last part of oviduct is called isthmus, which, join, which is joined to the uterus. Now about uterus. Uterus is inverted pH shaped. It opens into vagina through narrow cervix. The wall of uterus has three layers of tissues, which are named as perimetrium, myometrium and endometrium. Uterus is also called the womb. Okay, so perimetrium is the external thin membranous layer, then myometrium is the middle thick layer of smooth muscles, and endometrium being the last is the inner glandular layer. Okay, so next is external genitalia. <clears throat> External genitalia includes mon pubis, which is a cushion of fatty covered by skin and puber, uh, pubic hair. Then there is labor, uh, labia majora, that is the layer which has fleshy folds of tissues which extend down from the mons pubis and surround the vaginal opening. Then there is labia minora, that is a pair of uh, folds of tissues under the labia majora. Then is hymen. Hymen is the opening of vagina, which is often covered partially by a membrane called hymen. Then the last one is clitoris. It's a finger-like uh, structure lies at the upper junction of two labia minora above the urethral opening. Now about the last part of female reproductive system, that is the mammary glands. It consists of glandular tissue and fat. Glandular tissue of each breast is divided into 15 to 20 mammary lobes. So if you look here, this is how a mammary gland looks like. This is your female reproductive system and this is the location and the other organs explained well. So mammary gland consists of glandular tissue and fat as we talked. Mammary lobes contain cluster of cells called alveoli. The cells of alveoli secrete milk stored in the lumen of alveoli. The alveoli opens into mammary tubules. The tubules of each lobe join to form mammary duct. Then later on, the several mammary ducts join to form a wider mammary ampulla and mammary ampulla is connected to lactiferous duct through which milk is sucked out. Now about gametogenesis. So what is gametogenesis? Gametogenesis is basically the formation of gametes. Okay, so it has two processes under it. One of them is spermatogenesis. So the formation of sperm from germ cells in the testis is spermatogenesis. After the sperm formation, the sperm head is embedded in the Sertoli cell. Release of sperm from the seminiferous tubule is called spermiation. If you have a look here, the gametogenesis is well explained. Hormonal control of spermatogenesis. How are the hormones controlled under this process? This process is initiated at puberty due to secretion of gonadotrophin releasing hormone which is also known as GnRH. Then this secreted hormone from hypothalamus and stimu uh, stimulate anterior pituitary to secrete two gonadotrophins that is LH and FSH. LH acts on uh, lead egg cells and stimulates synthesis of androgens and then later on androgen stimulates spermatogenesis. FSH acts on Sertoli cells and stimulates spermatogenesis in other ways. This is how a structure of sperm looks like. So the ultra structure of sperm consists of a head, neck, middle piece and a tail. The whole body of sperm is surrounded by me uh, plasma membrane. The sperm head contain an elongated haploid nucleus above nucleus cap so above the nucleus 
cap, there is a structure present called acrosome. Acrosome contains enzymes which help in fertilization of ovum. The middle piece contains mitochondria which provide energy for movement of the tail that facilitates sperm motility. Human male ejaculate 200 to 300 million sperms during coitus. 60% must have normal shape and size and 40% of them must show vigorous motility. Then on their way to fluids from seminal vesicle and prostate gland, the secretions are added and that those secretions collectively are called as semen. The function of male accessory ducts and glands are maintained by testicular hormone androgen. Now is eugenesis. Formation of mature female gamete or ovum is called eugenesis. There are primary oocytes, primary follicles, secondary follicles and antrum. So the process here is explained stepwise how eugenesis occurs. Now menstrual cycle. Menstrual cycle is reproductive cycle of female primates. The first menstruation begins at puberty is called menarche. Menstrual cycle repeated at an average interval of 28 to 29 days. The ovum is released in middle of each menstrual cycle. Now menstrual cycle has following phases. There is a luteal phase. There is follicular phase. So luteal phase is usually f uh, 3 to 4 days and then follicular phase is 5 to 13 days. Then ovulatory phase which is the 14th day. Now comes fertilization and implantation. During coitus, semen is released by penis into vagina that is known as insemination. The motile sperms swim rapidly, pass through cervix, enter the uterus and finally reach the junction of isthmus and ampulla of the fallopian tube. The ovum released by ovary is transported into this junction. If you can have a look here, this is how the insemination occurs. This is the process of the implantation. Blastocyst completely embedded in the uterine endometrium is called implantation when the blastocyst completely implants, uh, joins in on the wall is known as implantation. Pregnancy and embryonic development. After implantation, finger-like projections appear on the trophoblast of the chronic villi which are surrounded by uterine tissue and maternal blood. The chronic villi and uterine tissues become inter interdigated with each other and jointly form a structural and functional unit between developing embryo and maternal body called placenta. Have a look here. This is how the embryonic development occurs. Now the last part, parturition and lactation. The average duration of human pregnancy is about nine months, which is also called the gestation period. Vigorous contraction of uterus at the end of pregnancy causes expulsion delivery of fetus called as parturition. The mammary gland of female undergoes differentiation during pregnancy and start producing milk towards the end of pregnancy by process called lactation. The milk produced during the initial days of lactation is called as clostrum which contains several antibo uh, antibodies absolutely essential to develop resistance for the newborn babies. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you liked my video. Please follow me for the regular videos and I hope you have gotten a better understanding.